Hello. This video shows you all the information concerning the open category. As already mentioned, the open category is the lowest risk category. It is the category in which the risk of colliding with people and objects is minimized by the use of very strict but easy understandable rules. Before starting to discover the open category, let's see three fundamental notions, UAS operator, remote pilot, and C-class of a drone. The UAS operators are those entities that plan, commission, and coordinate the mission. He decides in which category the mission falls. The remote pilot conducts the mission following the instruction provided by the UAS operator and knowing the drone with which he operates. No worries. We will be back to the role of the UAS operator and remote pilot. Remember, the UAS operator and remote pilot can be the same person. Oh, yeah. Drone C-classes are labels from C0 to C4 that every drone must have from 2022. The classification depends on the characteristics of the drone, such as speed, weight, sensors, geo-awareness, and so on. What? This classification was made to facilitate the operator's life because, based on it, an operator knows in which subcategory he can operate. Now that I provided all these necessary information, let's see the open category. The UAS operator that intends to carry out an open category mission must respect the following rules. Maintain constantly the visual contact a v -loss, with the drone. Not fly more than 120 meters height. No overflying assemblies of people. Once you comply with these rules, you don't need any approval from the competent authority before the flight. Just take off and enjoy. If you are wondering if it is possible to fly only in large open spaces, such as the countryside, hills or plateaus, away from everyone and everything, the answer is negative. The European Union has decided to subdivide the open category into three further categories. This is to allow the operator to fly even in spaces where there is the presence of people and building. Oh, yeah. Hear what they are. Subcategory A1 can be used by drones weighing less than 250 grams or belonging to class C0 or C1. For drones classified C0 or weighing less than 250 grams, you can overfly uninvolved people for a limited time. Uninvolved people are the one not informed of the flight and the risk associated with it. For drones classified C1, the pilot must check the flight area and ensure that uninvolved people are not in it. If the drone unexpectedly flies over uninvolved people, the pilot must immediately fly away from them. Involved people are the one informed about the flight, such as our friends and people close to the remote pilot. They can be overflow independently from the subcategory used. Subcategory A2 can be used by drones weighing more than 250 grams or with drones belonging to class C2. Neither assemblies of people nor uninvolved people can be overflown. From the latter, a variable horizontal distance must be maintained. The distance depends on the drone speed and height. Subcategory A3 can be used by drones weighing less than 25 kg or with drones belonging to classes C3 and C4. Neither assemblies of people nor uninvolved people can be overflown. Besides, a safety distance of at least 150 meters from residential, commercial, industrial or recreational areas must be maintained. It all seems very simple, the problem is that only from 2022 it is expected that the drone's classification C0, C4 will be put into force by the manufacturers. Therefore, the use of the subcategories from 1st of January the 20th 21 are linked to the weight of the drone as per the table. 
To find out more information indispensable for your flight, such as the responsibilities and capabilities that AUAS operators and pilot must have. Or to find out in which category your drone can fly, visit my website in the description.